was Dory from Finding Nemo's I, Whale Voice. But why, though? What you say? I told you that it's time to start the show. That you only meant well. Yeah, the show's going to well, do well. Of course you did. What you say? I said, let's go. That it's all for the best. Yeah, it's probably going to be like the best podcast. What you say? God, do I have to keep repeating That's myself? Just what we need. But you decided this. Hold up, I what thought we both say? decided to do this. What did she say? I said, let's start the show. Hey everyone, welcome to mm, What You Say, an OC podcast. My name is Elise Daly. And I'm Scott Daly. Together, we're, we're the, the Dailies. Dailies. This is the podcast where each and every week I take my wife hostage and force her to discuss the hit 2000s teen drama, The OC. Had not read that before you said it. That this was weird. Week, season one, episode 18, uh, The Truth. Adulthood, right what? there. 18, adulthood. Oh. Our show became an adult. Sure, yeah. I, I and guess. quite serious things happened. Yeah, we became an adult. It going into overdrive. Yeah, but before we get into that, it is time for everyone's favorite section. It's time for the Rosies and Thornies. Every yeah. rose has its thorn. Has its thorn. Just like every night has its dawn. Dawn, dawn, dawn. Every cowboy. Sings a sad, sad song. Every rose has its thorn. Yeah. Jesus. Yes, this is the part of the podcast where Scott and I look back on last week and talk about the good and the bad, the rosies and the thornies. As always, we're going to start with the bad. So, Scott, what's happened in the past week? What was your thorn? Well, uh, last week we went to... Orlando, Florida. We did. For four, five days, four and a half days, yeah. um, to meet up with my family, who was doing a Disney World vacation. Um, we came on the tail end of the Disney World part of the trip and just did one day at Epcot, and then we did two days at Universal Studios, which we is did. a spoiler for my rose, but um, my thorn here is, is being old, Elise, because yes. we hung out with my niece... And my nephew for five days, they are nine and six years old, um, not respectively. My niece is nine. Yes. My niece is nine. My nephew is six. And we hung out with them at the amusement parks. And, you know, I mean, I'm still young-ish, but nothing quite makes you feel old like hanging out with a nine-year-old. <laughs> Because at the end of a very long day of walking and standing and being and just waiting in lines and doing things for hours and hours and hours from from eight in the morning till eight in the evening, thirty mm-hmm. five year old Scott, he's pretty tired. But, but 90, you're only thirty four. Thirty four year old Scott, <laughs> he's so tired he can't even remember his age. But my niece and nephew. Still so much energy. Energizer bunnies. I remember, we, so our hotel room was like a down a long hallway. And the last day we were walking down that hallway, I remember my nephew just sprinting down the hallway at the end of the night. And we were so tired. We were so tired. We were wet. Yeah, we were soaking wet and tired. And I was just like, holy crap. I'm old. I'm old. And where point, old people go is Florida. And at one point, yeah, I know. At one point, I turned to my niece and was like, hey, Mara, do your feet hurt? And she goes, no. I was like, just you wait. <laughs> just you wait. So it was just a feeling of in being old. It was just, yeah. I mean, we were still able to do everything we wanted to do. Like, I'm fine. Yeah. Like, um, We haven't hit that point yet. No, we have definitely not hit that point yet. But we definitely hit the point where at the end of the day, I was like, Whew. I think I went to bed early just about every night we were out there. And it was really we were doing an lot. hour earlier. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So it was even worse. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, so that's my thorn, being yeah. old. What's yours? Um, mine's the rain. Ugh. So before I pack, I always look at the weather forecast so I know that I pack appropriate clothes. Mm-hmm. And I saw that there is a very high chance of rain for the days that we were there. And I know that Florida, it rains every day and everyone's like, oh yeah, that's just Florida. Welcome to Florida. But this was actually forecasted for like heavy rain, not those just showers that come through and they're they're over and done quickly. And 
on Wednesday, that was our first day there, I thought to myself, no, I don't need to wear the rain jacket that I purposefully packed. And Scott wouldn't bring his. And he kind of like looked at me funny, like carrying around a jacket oh. all day. It's not your fault. I know it's not um, your fault. Looking, looking at how this is all turning no, into No, it's not your fault. fault. It's not your fault. I'm just saying I didn't bring my jacket. It was my responsibility, and mm-hmm. I chose not to bring it. Mm-hmm. And I greatly suffered for that. It poured. It poured. We had and When it rains, it pours. And that, I, I looked like I was out of the shower. Walk, I looked like I took a shower in my clothes. Our walk from dinner to the bus back to the hotel at Epcot was just rain the whole time. Yeah, it was awful. No umbrellas, no ponchos, no... To be fair, we could have bought ponchos or umbrellas, but do you know how much those things cost? Yeah, we bought a Disney fourteen dollar umbrella at Universal. Oh my god! After it's the ridiculous. horrible day that we had had, my yeah. whole family bought ponchos for twelve dollars. Twelve dollar ponchos cost like thirty cents to manufacture. It's a racket. It's and they a racket. smelled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, it's fine. I didn't get sick. I didn't die. We're good. Hmm. Okay, so Scott, what was the good part about the trip? The good part about the trip was the trip. Whoa! Because I had so much fun. Um, so I had been to Disney World a lot. I have many, many fond and not so fond memories of Disney World. Um, but I oh, have not, not fond. Huh? I have not been to Universal Studios since 1996. Oh I wow! Was Ten years old. Um, and I hadn't, I hadn't been there. So Universal Studios has done a lot of changing since then. And it was the first time we got to go. Good and we, changes. And we spent two days at Universal Studios to the one day we spent at Disney. So really for us, it was a Universal Studios trip with a little bit of Disney. That's and true. I really enjoyed Universal Studios. Every single ride there was different than the rides I went on. The Jaws ride isn't there anymore. The Back to the Future ride isn't there anymore. The mm-hmm. Twister ride isn't there anymore. Um, the King Kong ride is different. Everything's changed. Everything's different. But um, I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. Uh, the Harry Potter world is obviously completely new since I've been there. And wonderful. It's a lot of fun. I particularly liked my wife, Elise, who, as everyone out there knows, huge Potterhead. Just loves the books. Read them all multiple times. Seen all the movies. Forwards and them, backwards. Watches them. Uh, no, this is all a lie. Elise I could has, quote every line of every movie. You, Elise has watched the movies once, maybe. She's read 2.5. I've watched them more than once, she's read, Scott. She's read 2.5 of the books. Um, but I told you why I stopped. I had a reason. But my wife loves to be a performer, and she loves to show off. And so we walked. Is that what it is? So we walked into Hogsmeade, and she saw there was a robe for sale, and she said, "Yes, I need to have that. Uh I need to have the Slytherin robe, even though I've never read these books, and I don't know what happens in them. But I am a Slytherin, so I need a robe. I am very resourceful. I am very determined. I am very ambitious. I am not criticizing your (laughs) your housing of yourself in a Slytherin. I agree with that. (laughs) A hundred percent. My comment here is just on the fact that you bought a robe and like you don't care about Harry Potter. Scott, I'm going to wear that robe at school. I know you are. I just you don't care about you're not like your sister is huge into Harry Potter. Your sister Mm -hmm. loves Harry Potter. But that's not you. No. But now and you I have, can't because we already have someone who's fit that bill. But now you have a robe and a wand and then a, a, I have two wands. A headband. You have two wands. I told you I had another wand. I had to get my dark house wand, so I had to get my Letta Lestrange wand to match my Slytherin. I had Luna Lovegood, which I guess is also a fitting character for me. <laughs> so just, the, the, the characters you're attracted to just do not surprise me at all. That's good. At all. Good. Yep. So what was your rose? Um, I missed my puppies. And so I was really happy when I got my puppies back. I think our roses are going to be puppy related for a while. It's okay. Although right now this puppy is scratching against my yeah. desk and making noise. And the microphone I've already is probably had to pick- move the cords up and wrap them around things because she kept chewing on them. And then she found plastic and now she found herself in the mirror. She just <laughs> likes to scratch. It is very difficult to do this podcast while like pushing my dog away from the thing she's not supposed to be playing with with my feet. Yeah. But it's a skill, guys. 
And uh, it's a skill we all have to learn eventually. But I'm um, so you're happy that you're back with the the doggy's so big now. She yeah. got big in five days. She's big. I mean, not like drastically huge. Her legs are definitely longer though. Her back yeah. legs, especially. Legs are longer. Legs are longer. You know, I haven't seen long. her do that sideways walk yet. I don't think she does anymore. Her legs have finally grown in. No. Oh. No Good more sideways you, walk for you, Penny. Is that it? Is that just, that's your rose? Sorry, Penny had something in her mouth. Yes, that is my rose. Do you know what my, you know what my bonus rose is? Mm-hmm. That sweet letter that our niece gave us. And she, oh yeah, that was she really spent, nice. She bought us a little gift. She bought us a little notepad and some She used her own hard-earned $2. She used her own money to buy us little tiny knickknacks. And it's the most precious thing it ever. It was really sweet. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I love, I love our niece and nephew so much. Yeah. Thank you, Omara, if you're listening. I don't think she is, but thank that you. That was very nice. Mm-hmm. All right, enough of that. Okay. Are we ready for episode 18, The Truth? We are. We're about to spill the tea. Gross. <laughs> the Truth is the 18th episode of season one of The O.C. It was written by Alan Heinberg, who is, uh, he's like an executive producer of this series. He writes, so he's written like eight episodes in this season alone. Um, and it was directed by Rodman Flender. Rodman Flender. Rodman this is uh, his first and only episode. No relation the to Dennis, because that's his last name. Co- correct. Just wanted to clear that up with everybody. First name Rodman has no relation. Well, you know, to in him. some places, you name your children. Their first name is what your last name was. So, I mean, I guess they could be related if they. I mean, he's not. I don't but. know. What are you talking about? In certain Asian cultures, when you name your child, your last name becomes their first name. I just think it's they order the sur- the surname comes first when they list their names. Not from what I have been told. Uh, like, okay, <laughs> we don't have to discuss this, but like, they their surname and last name or surname and first name order in some Asian countries is the opposite of ours. Okay, I'll take your word on it, because that's the truth, Scott. Uh, This episode originally aired on February 11th, 2004, so a bit of a break between last episode and this one, a couple weeks off, because I think the last one episode aired on the 21st of January, so really, cliffhanger, what's going to happen with this Ryan stuff? Ugh, I'm sorry for all those people that were watching it in real time and had to deal with that much longer of Oliver in their lives. At least hit me. With that summary, that okay. sweet, sweet summary. So in this episode, Ryan finds himself truly out in the cold when he's suspended from school, shunned by Marissa, and even scrutinized by the Coens, all of whom refuse to believe Ryan's claims that this that that Oliver is a dangerous sociopath and obsessed with Marissa. Ironically, the only person who believes Ryan is Luke, who agrees to help Ryan make a background check on Oliver to find any dirt on him. But when Luke reveals evidence to Marissa and then Sandy that some of Oliver's references from his old school are false, they refuse to believe Luke, especially after learning that he's been talking with Ryan. Meanwhile, Jimmy thinks his past will impair his ability to work in the business field again. Seth continues dating Anna, who thinks Summer's presence around them is not a good thing. Things come to a head when Oliver begins losing his bland self-control to lie when Marissa comes to his penthouse to tell him that she's not interested in a relationship with him. Then he really loses it, and Marissa sees, way too late, that Ryan was right about Oliver when he holds her hostage with a gun. Can we pause for a second? What was the summary? Um... Where was Jimmy? He's not in the episode. I think he was really thinking about this business field so hard that he just couldn't even come on camera. What is this? This whole thing this is, is just crazy. awful. Scott, this is awful. Some of Oliver's this is why people need to go to school. school are, are false. References is not the correct term. Seth continues dating Anna, who thinks Summer's presence around them is not a good thing. Why not mention that they break up? That's what happens in this Scott, episode. Scott, this is just really bad. But overall... What'd you think? Oh, you just, like, at the end of the episode, it's like you were holding... You know when you, like, really have to go pee? 
really, really bad. And you've been holding it for a really long time to the point where it like hurts almost to even walk. Oh my or God. if you're like in the car and it's like the bump and you're like, oh my God, I can't, you know? And then after you just like go to the bathroom and you just get that feeling of, <sighs> what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> That's how you feel at the end of this episode. Oh my god, that's the most ex- like. Specific. But everyone knows what that feeling is, right? Don't you know that feeling, Scott? I mean, I guess, but I just never would have like that. Would not have been the first thing I'd reach for when oh. the metaphor. It's like, oh, how do I describe this feeling? You know how when you pee a lot, <laughs> and then it it's good <laughs> when you get that good pee out. Just that good, good pee. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know what? But if, you know what? I'm, you know the feeling I'm talking about. I do. I know the feeling. It fits. I just am worried about you. You grabbing for that first. That's Hi. it. That's it. Why would know. you be worried about that? A little concerning to me. Okay. But let's just jump right into it okay. and let's talk about this episode. Um, we start at the beginning. With our Very cold good open. place to start, yes. With our cold open. Uh, Sandy walks into the pool house, as he's going to do many times throughout the course of this episode, and he fills Ryan in on the situation at school, also conveniently filling us, the viewer, in that Ryan has been suspended indefinitely while the school makes their mind up on if they want to expel him or not, because he, as you people might remember, punched a student in the face last episode. Um, and so that's where we start. Yeah. So Sandy lays some ground rules with Ryan that he's been suspended indefinitely while the school decides if they really want to expel him. I literally, I, mean, I just said that exact thing. Like, did I ju- you? I just, that whole exact I thing? I was that. listening. I just said that I kind all. of was listening. <laughs> um, so, oh yeah. Well, Sandy gives him an ultimatum. <laughs> doing it's i wrote it down you're skipping things you don't i don't know what you're doing he's not sorry okay so ryan's like not sorry for anything that he's done which is surprising right you think he would be I mean, would you think that he's sorry if he thinks that Oliver is out to get Marissa and he's a horrible person and he just punched him in the face? Do you think he'd be sorry for punching him in the face? No. I mean, I think he'd be sorry for realizing that he's gotten in a place where he's beaten. But oddly enough... Is he beaten or did he beat? Well, I mean, literally, yes. But as we said last week, he may have... I'm not re- I'm not redoing my pun. Battle again. and war, Scott. Battles and war. But Oliver decides not to press charges, Elise, which um, sa- it confuses Sandy Cohen because he's like, if he this kid really wanted you gone, wouldn't he just do it? But you got to be thinking the 4D chess that Oliver is thinking, which is Oliver Marissa. doesn't play chess. It's an expression, Elise. You just <laughs> talked about pissing for like three minutes, and I use a chess metaphor, and somehow I I've never played the chess. Line. <laughs> Um, Oliver, so Oliver is playing chess here and realizes that not pressing charges is a way to show Marissa how good and understanding of a person he is. Mm -hmm. He's good. He's understanding. All about that Marissa game. He just wants to move on and just, and just, he wants, he wants Marissa to be happy, right? That's all he wants. Yeah. With him. Sandy then starts, I'm just going to take over talking and you can fill in because, you obviously can't read. I'm sorry. Um, I'm trying to. My, I have divided attention. Well, right I, now. I need your attention. I I'm need it. Sorry. I need it I'm sorry. I'm right trying here. to make it undivided. I'm trying to fuse it back together. Sandy, uh, as as like will be the three beat of this episode, pleads with Ryan to talk to him. Talk to me. Like I can help you through this. I help me understand. Help me understand what's going on with you. Help me understand what you're going through. And Ryan says he won't do it, makes the argument, uh, you wouldn't believe me anyway. And Sandy's response here, I think, is really good here. It's not about what I believe. It's about what you, Ryan, did. The next time you feel like raising your fist, you better open your mouth and talk. Because he's on probation. He's going to get kicked out of school. He could be back in jail. He could be. And, and, and he gives him an ultimatum. If you do anything without running it by Kirsten or I first... You can't be part of this family anymore. 
That has to be, the, and that's kind of the ultimatum he gives him. So we start off this episode in a very, very serious place. Ryan is on thin ice with his guardians. Yeah. And they're not letting him go, though. They're holding him accountable for what he did. Which is important. It is important. And then, California. Here. We come. It, Ryan. I think it's weird that you sang the come part. Why? Because it's like, it's like the nasty word come. It's like the dirty word come. No, it's C-O-M-E. I know, but the, I don't know. You just, when you emphasized it that way. It's just like the, the naughty word. Yeah. What's that song? The song that's played so many times this episode with Ryan bored in the pool house doing some crunches. And it's like this, this I don't know one what song. song is. I don't really know what's going on with the music in this first season. I mean, they have some really good songs, but then they also and they have some clunkers. Yeah. I think they're still they, yeah. they don't have too much they're money. They're getting yet. their fitting. They're just, you you pay for a lot of you pay for a good song in one episode, yeah. you're going to have a bad song in another episode. I have no idea what it was, but I do remember it. I do know what you're talking about. Yeah. It's not It's not very good. Bump, 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 bump. He's doing some, he's reading books and he's reading comic books. But he's not he's, really reading. He opens them and he yeah. just tosses them behind his shoulder because who reads these days weak anyway? Weak ass crunches, some yeah. weak, like, the, look, I mean, look at my belly. I'm not a crunch man, but. What about Aziz? No, who, no, who has it? That's, I know my brain is tired. <laughs> Kumail Nanjiani. Kumail, I bet you he can do some crunches. Oh my god! Yeah, Kumail Nanjiani released photos of him after a year of uh, being on a Marvel contract, and damn, maybe if Ryan should call up Kumail and get his uh, his diet plan. The I thing, like Kumail. I want to watch the big sick again. The thing that I like the most about what Kumail said with that whole thing is that he basically was like. Look, this is not possible. Like the way I look right now, this is this is not normal. This is not possible. The only reason I look like this is because I had one of the richest studios in the world fund uh, some of the best personal trainers and nutritionists for me for an entire year. So it's like he's like acknowledging that he looks ridiculous, but is also saying like this is not achievable. You person out there on the internet should not look at this and say. Oh, I could. I want to do that. I should judge myself against. Well, this that's person. what you said. You texted me and you were like, "I should get an MCU contract." I, I was joking, Elise. Obviously, the MCU is not going to hire me. I am not an actor. Aren't you though? I mean, sometimes. I sometimes. believe you. When could we're do struggling it. through this episode. Yeah. Well, some other people who are struggling. Summer. Summer is struggling this episode, but Summer and Marissa, they're talking before school about Oliver, Ryan, and how Ryan and Marissa broke up, <clears throat> and Summer doesn't understand why he'd do it either. Why'd he, he punch him? Yes. He might be violent, but he's not stupid. Yeah. So Summer thinks that something had to have been said or gone on, because she knows Ryan enough now to know that it's not going to be... He's impulsive, but his impulsivity is always rooted in some sort of truth. Right. And I think what we're doing now is we're slowly adding members to team, I believe, Ryan, um, which will add members to. Yeah. Luke old, was there. Luke was there. Luke from was the there from the get go. Oh, trusty oh, Luke. old yeller. Luke is kind of like a puppy dog, isn't he? Uh, he is. Um, but yeah. So one of the other things says is like, like he's convinced that Oliver is in love with me. And Summer's response is, isn't he? <laughs> Yeah. Um, I mean, everybody knows except for Marissa. But, okay. Marissa has to know on some level, too, right? Like, I I truly don't... I think she wants, like... I think she sees a person, Oliver... As she, she says it later, like, I can talk to this person. Um, I don't have to deal with some of the problems of Ryan, which is jealousy. Uh, this person is open with me and talks to me. Um, I know this person is going through shit as well because I met them in therapy. I feel a kindred spirit in the shit we're going through. But she has to know on some level that he's been flirting with her. Because, like, it's so, he's not doing it subtly. Like, it's really super obvious. Right? Am I just, am I just giving Marissa too much credit? Marissa's not the brightest bulb in the box. Am I giving her I mean, too you've much credit? seen her throughout this entire season so far. That is true. That is true. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't really think that she understands. But realizing that they're both single, Summer wants to hang out with Marissa because 
She doesn't have a boyfriend. Danny didn't work out. Marissa now doesn't have Ryan. But Marissa can't hang out with her because Oliver wants to hang out with her. And Marissa's choosing Oliver over Summer. So Summer has nothing to do. So what's she going to do, Elise? Where's she going to go? Who are you going to call? Seth and Nanda. Hey, if we went to an amusement park that sold um, Ghostbusters jumpsuits and proton packs. Oh my you, gosh, yes, I'd buy, buy one. one of those. Yes. I don't understand your obsession with costumes. I love costumes. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to Matt today about how we're going to see Star Wars. And we were trying to figure out what our doof and chill is going to be this month. And I was like, what if it's just me and Elise, like, live reactions of what we thought about Star Wars? And Matt was like, I don't know. Does Elise like Star Wars? And I had to be like, I don't know. <laughs> yes, I love Star Wars, But Scott. do you? Yes. Do you like dressing as Star Wars? Or do you actually like the Star Wars movies? Well, I actually like the Star Wars movies. But remember that one time that my field day was Star Wars? <laughs> I know. That's, that's the, what I brought up to him. It's uh-huh. like... I don't know if that's you liking Star Wars or just you having an excuse to dress up as something. No, I really like it. Okay. okay. Yeah. So I don't know how we got on this. What were we talking about? Um, you know, we're just talking about being single. We're talking about chilling. We're talking about Seth and Anna. Dun, 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 dun. That's how we got on it. Oh yeah, Seth and Anna. so we cut to Seth and Anna, and they are also talking about Ryan. Anna has a bunch of questions from him. Is he okay? If he gets expelled, will he still live with you? How is he doing? And Seth doesn't know the answers to these questions because he hasn't been talking to Ryan because Seth is a little mad. He gave Ryan some advice. He tried to help him out. And Ryan didn't listen to him, no. and it got him into trouble. Um, and then he does this thing, which is the start of what I'm going to call the Seth is a fucking asshole section of mm. this episode, where he's just a dick to Anna, mm-hmm. like, from this point forward. He says this statement, you don't really know Ryan that well, okay? You wouldn't understand. And then Anna's response is, I'm trying to. And it's just like, look... Here we're gonna see this throughout this whole episode, and so does Sandy Cohen, and my boy Captain America Cohen calls his son out on this stuff, and I love it. But and as much as I want to see Seth get with Summer, and I'm excited about where we're leaving this episode, he's a fucking dick to Anna. She does not I mean, deserve this. Thing. She does not deserve stuff like this. And this is the start of it right here. This you no, wouldn't understand. It wasn't you the start understand. of it. The start well, of it no, was okay. last episode when he had already made up his mind that he doesn't want to be like her and so he's put up that deflection of anything that would be similar anything that i would understand we are not going to be on the same page anymore so you don't understand ryan you don't understand really what's going on a hundred percent in my life because you are not me and you cannot be me and so i don't want you to be me and it's just it's sad that that's happening Mm -hmm. it is sad I feel yeah. bad for Anna. I don't like Seth with Anna, with Anna at all. But um, you don't like how he's treating no, Anna. No, no, nobody deserves. Like, I think Anna's a cool person, character, whatever. And nobody deserves to be treated like that. And I hope, I don't, we'll see. I hope the show calls Seth out on this. I'm afraid that it's not going to. It gets close with Sandy, but there's no, no we'll get to it. Anyway, okay. this is the start of it. This is, I don't like Seth in this episode at all. Okay. So. Then Oliver shows up. The two groups bump into each other. And oh, yeah. it's really awkward. Because they don't know what to do. Because they're all kind of friends through Ryan. And they don't really know what to do. Ryan's not here anymore. He might never be here again. And it's awkward until Aunt, uh, Seth and Summer start like finishing each other's sentences in this really cute way. Here's the thing. And I wonder. I, 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 like We don't look up any production stuff with this show. We do know that Summer was not planning on being a full-time character until they brought her in to do that. We also know... Rachel Bilson and Adam Brody? They dated. They did? During the show, yeah, in real life. They have incredible chemistry. Yeah. Like, they just ping off each other really well. They dated for a long time. I mean, I've noticed it in the past. I really noticed it in this episode, especially this part of this episode. They were just, like, where they're finishing each other's sentences. And, of course... I think the show realizes it too and it's playing off of that and it's having Anna play off of that where she doesn't have to say anything. She just gives these looks, these concerned looks 
Mm, it's beautiful. I love it. Yeah. Well, and then Oliver shows up. Yep, there's Oliver. What's her Oliver entrance thing? I don't even remember mm. anymore. I don't want to remember. Like, and you know what? Like we don't need to remember. Music? It's like fine. Music? We're just like going to let it go. The, the Dory whale sound. Wasn't like something what like I that? Had, probably. So he wants to know, or he is very happy. Oh, yeah. He's so, he's so happy. And Why is he so happy? And as soon as they all walk away, well, not all of them, but as soon as Oliver walks away and they all comment on the fact that he is so happy, I think it was summer. It was summer. It was yeah. summer. She said, well, why shouldn't he be? He is Marissa all to himself now. Like everybody knows. Everybody knows that Oliver likes Marissa and everybody knows that he had it out for Ryan. It's amazing that and no then, one's doing anything no. about this. Like that's the weird thing is they make it very clear in this episode that Summer is fully aware of what's going on. I mean, maybe not the extent of how dangerous Oliver is and how much of a liar Oliver is, but she knows Oliver's into it. Her manipulating friend, yeah. and she knows Oliver's manipulating things and she is not she never joins team let's tell Marissa right that's Luke and Ryan only Summer never joins it and I kind of wish I wish that they would have involved her in that way but she's too busy flirting with Seth Cohen forever yeah so Sandy and Kirsten are eating lunch talking about Ryan too because Ryan's ears are burning everybody's talking yep. about him and then all of a sudden It's Julie Juju. She's decided to redo all the office furniture in the entire place. Kiki and Caleb are not happy because as they are trying to actually have lunch, everything is taken away. away. Table's taken away. Chairs taken away. How are they supposed to eat lunch when there's nothing in the room? Good question. Yeah. Um, And then my favorite line in the entire episode, uh, Julie (laughs) invites them to lunch with Caleb and her and says, you two want to join us? We're celebrating my new position. And from the back of the room, it's this beautiful shot because the room is now empty and it's just a long shot of Sandy standing alone at the back of the room. And he just says, oh, I'm not going to touch that. (laughs) It's perfect. I love it. It's perfect. Um, Um, Hey, Elise, didn't we have a whole thing last episode where we taught Julie the lesson of diving too uh, aggressively and enthusiastically into projects with this job and to maybe learn to like roll things back a little bit and maybe take your time and not try to do too much. We did. And then in the very next episode, she's coming into the office and literally replacing the furniture in every single room. Well, yeah, but she didn't really learn her lesson because Kirsten helped her out and then made her shine. Yeah, it's almost as if you don't let people fail and learn their lessons, they won't learn nothing. Failing is that first attempt in learning. Yeah, yeah. That's what it stands for, The greatest teacher failure is... That's a Last Jedi reference. The best Star Wars movie. Did you finish Boom. that last night or did you fall asleep? Of course I finished it last night. I love that It's a that long movie. movie. It is a long movie and it's a great movie and I loved it. Okay. Well, back at school, Oliver is trying to convince Marissa to go out of town with him again. Yeah, he does that a lot, doesn't he? Yeah, he just wants to steal her away so that they're completely isolated and by themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like uh, The Bachelor when he's like, yeah. hey, uh, can I can I steal you away? So Luke shows up while they're oh, having that was good. Lunch. That was a good reference. <laughs> Give me some credit for that. Don't just move right on. It was good, Scott. Thank you. It was good. Thank I you. appreciate that. And The Bachelor's coming back in January. No. So hooray for that. That's not good. Yeah. So Luke shows up while Marissa and Oliver are eating lunch and planning this whole thing. And he's totes Team Ryan. Still Team Ryan. Yeah. So, um... Everything that he wants to talk to Marissa about, Oliver interrupts and tries to answer the question. Ryan calls. Oh, she's not talking to Ryan right now. And then he is trying to, what was he trying to do? And he was like, oh, yeah, well, is she still talking to me? Or are you talking for her now? Yeah. And it was just, yeah. Luke saw right through Oliver from the get-go yeah. with Ryan. If there's anything. And so if, Lu- if Ryan can't be there. Luke's going to step in for Ryan. If there's anything Luke can do well, it's sniff out another douchebag. Yeah. You know? you smell that bro nose. Yeah. <laughs> that bro nose. I like it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Ryan does call Marissa, though, and she doesn't answer. He leaves a message, and then she steps away for a brief second, and Oliver picks up her phone, listens to the message, and then deletes it. 
basically the message was Ryan wants to meet up with her in the library after school to talk things out. Mm-hmm. Um, Oliver deletes it. That is basically what Ryan did last episode, right? I mean, taking the note out of the locker and reading it is mm-hmm. is just basically this is the 21st Only century Ryan version of that. Ryan didn't tear up the note and throw it True. away. So Ryan's better, yeah. conclusively. Yep, we did welcome. It. We did it. Okay. So... Summer still doesn't have Marissa, and she bumps back into Seth and Anna and asks what they're doing. They're going to the comic book store, and Summer wants to tag along. Yeah, because uh, Betty and Veronica. Veronica were very important to her growing up. Yeah. She should watch Riverdale. She should watch Riverdale. She'd love Riverdale. <laughs> she probably would. She should be on Riverdale. The fact that they haven't brought She Rachel would be a Wilson, mom. I know she would be. It's oh. the whole disturbing, but... Chad she, Michael Murray. She would be a mom. Rachel Bilson is older now than Julie Cooper was in the show. Rachel Bilson should be Veronica's aunt. I honestly, Riverdale, why have you not brought Rachel Bilson in yet? I don't know. What are you doing, guys? They should. They you will. You had Chad Michael Murray ride an evil Knievel rocket <laughs> off of a rooftop. But you haven't brought Rachel Bilson in? Yeah, it's weird. Anyway. Okay. Uh, the, the interesting, th- the reason I brought this out specifically is because I wanted to talk to you about this for a bit. Okay. Because we had, a couple weeks ago, we had Summer in full sabotage mode. Where she we was, did. She was being around Anna and Seth specifically to sabotage their relationship. Because she's their friend. Yeah, that's Seth. why she went on the golfing trip with them. But since that moment, since the end of that moment where she stormed off after listening to them like go back and forth while they were sitting in bed watching TV. She hasn't really been on that kick anymore. No. Um, and, and, and she I want, tried to get Danny. Yeah. She, so she was trying net, to move on. Yeah. She dated someone else, um, found them lacking cause they were not funny. Cause Danny is not, not a funny Cohen. person. And now I don't like, I think there's a read of this that you could have, but I don't think it's the right one that this is part of her sabotage game. That the reason she's around them right now, the reason she wants to go to the comic book store is because she's hoping to sabotage their relationship. But I don't think that's what it is. No, I think she's bored and she's lonely. Mm-hmm. She's looking for someone to hang out with. And she likes Seth Cohen. And she likes hanging out with him, even to do comic booky thingies that isn't yeah. her thing. Yeah. And she was friends with Anna before they... Yeah. Yeah. And that's the sad part is the Anna friendship has kind of completely died here. Like... It's sad. Yeah. I don't like when shows do that. So right before they're about to go to the comic book shop, Seth was going to go check in on Ryan. And then all of a sudden he doesn't need to go check in on him or call him or anything because Ryan shows up at school. Right there. Yeah. Seth confronts him because he doesn't think that this is something that Ryan should do because he's already suspended from school and he doesn't need to get expelled. That would be horrible. Um, Yeah. Showing up at the school you're suspended from. Probably not a great idea. Yeah. No, speaking from someone who, yeah, and not a good, not someone who did it, but yeah, knows and the rules. A lot of what the, the direction of this episode is going to go is going to go this direction of none of these people believed Ryan when they should have. But, yeah. but in this moment, we see Seth say, okay, he's crazy. Fine. Oliver's crazy. But the way you're going about this right now is not the right way. And he's right. Like that's he is right. I, I, it's the end of this episode bothers me so much. I like so much of this episode. The end really pisses me off, and we'll get there. But this is kind of setting the stage for why the end pisses me off. So because yeah. once again, Seth gives good advice to his brother, and Ryan blows him off. And so Ryan blows him off, yeah, and walks into the library. But instead of Marissa showing up, Oliver is there because remember Marissa has. No idea that Ryan's coming Mm -hmm. because Oliver had deleted the text message or not the text message, the voicemail. And so Oliver's making threats that if he doesn't stop, then Marissa said she's going to put a restraining order on Mm -hmm. Ryan. And Ryan wants to know how that feels. because It's a good burn, Ryan. You got him. You got him. Because Oliver has a restraining Mm -hmm. order. Yeah. So then they just go back and forth and back and forth kind of, you know. Peacocking, if you will. Indeed. Yes. And then. Good reference. Yes. Oliver leaves. But hey. we see some growth here for Ryan. Hey, Oliver. It hasn't even begun. But it has. Yeah. That's, it's, I mean, it's been going on. It's been going on for it's, quite it's some began. time, Ryan. But you are right that Ryan does not punch anyone. Right. <laughs> he gets out of this whole argument 
without punching anyone in the face. Let's get let's get. Do you ra- think he had his hands in his pocket? Round of applause. Um, do you think he, what like, was he doing with his hands? What does Ryan do with his hands when he's not punching people? I think here's I don't what know he if did. I've seen them. I think he walked out of the library, and I think he punched the first person he saw in the face, and we oh, just didn't get to see that. That part. might that might have happened. Yeah. Okay. So, way to go, Ryan, for not punching people. Mm -hmm. Kirsten wants to punch someone (laughs) named Julie Cooper. You're you're so good at these transitions this week, babe. Am I? Yeah. I mean, you might have reread the same line I had already (laughs) just read, but you're nailing these transitions. Anyways. So, yeah. Julie, again, still has not returned any of the furniture. And Kirsten's having to work from home. And Kirsten's not happy about that. No. But... Scott's not happy about something either because in this part of the episode, Sandy comes in and he's looking for the coffee, looking for the bagel, and then he's talking to Kirsten and Scott can't get over. I want to paint a picture. I want to paint a picture and it's a bad picture. Imagine you have a bagel. Yeah. It's it's sitting in your hand. I can imagine that. It is a a whole bagel that has not been sliced. Okay. Imagine then you hold that bagel in your hand Mm -hmm. and you go to the top of the bagel and you start picking mm-hmm. pieces of the top of the bagel off of it and just eating them. Now here's, and, and that's the way you eat the bagel. Here's the question I have for you. Uh-huh. Okay. So normally we would say bagel guillotine. Sure. Right? Yeah. But he can't find it because Kirsten's posted up shop there. So he can't find the guillotine. And he can't get to the knives. So what's a, a boy to do? How is he supposed to eat his bagel with no knife so he can't slice it and no guillotine so he can't slice it? You know what you do? What? You eat that sucker like a donut. You do not pick. Oh, gross. You do not pick. No. You do he not. can't eat it like a donut. Yeah, that's what you got to do. No. You cannot pick at the top of the, donut, at the, top of the bagel like you're a bird or too something. Too dense. Too thick. <laughs> gross. Eat it like a donut. Babe. No, if I could not slice the bagel, uh, the way that Sandy ate it could seem to be an appropriate way to eat the bagel. You disgust me. You disgust me. I'm gonna buy bagels that are unsliced. If I see you and eating, hide all the knives. If I see you eating a bagel like that, I will hit it out of your hands. No, I will do. That it. would be a waste of a perfectly good bagel. I would do it. No. So. Uh, so anyway, Julie Cooper <laughs> shows up. And wanting to carpool with Kiki, she's like, hey, why aren't you dressed? We're going to work together. Um, and so while Kirsten goes off to get ready, mm-hmm. Julie is hanging out at the Coens, mm-hmm. reading a newspaper. Yeah. And who should walk up but Ryan? And there's this really awkward moment where Julie puts down her paper and they just kind of stare at each other for a while because they mm-hmm. have history to each other. But then Ryan decides to chat with Julie and warn her about Oliver Mm -hmm. warn her about who Oliver is and what Oliver has done and try to use Julie Cooper to help Marissa get away from Oliver. Mm -hmm. Now remove your uh, school administrator hat for Mm -hmm. a moment. Take it off. Mm -hmm. Please take it off. Mm -hmm. Take off the hat. Put it aside. Was this a good idea for Ryan? No. Yeah, sure. I said remove that hat. No. Be, Be a teenage girl with issues with your mother learning that your boyfriend or ex-boyfriend has gone to your mother mother who you have well-known issues with and tried to pull her into this problem that's going on between the two of you Mm -hmm. you think that's fine Mm -hmm. i don't understand you this is the second week in a row you've answered yeah that's fine (laughs) well i mean you think about the time that ryan was actually able to talk to Julie about what happened in Tijuana and get her to sign with him about the therapy, you know, like not getting Marissa sent away. And the fact that Ryan and Julie, as much as they, or as much as Julie likes to think that she has nothing in common with Ryan, they have a lot in common. And Ryan doesn't know at this point whether he's ever going to be able to talk with Marissa or get back with Marissa ever again. So he's thinking about at least one person who is going to have to have a relationship with Marissa and who is very controlling in Marissa's life. If she knows how bad this person is, that's something she can control or try to control. God, you're such a narc. What? Can't believe you, narc. Golden snitch. Narc. 
Hey, why can't Jimmy Cooper be brought in? Because he's worried about this business that he's trying to get into. Yeah. Uh, so we cut back to Oliver and Oliver is talking to Marissa at on the steps on the way into school. And Oliver is doing this thing he does often, which is he invites someone to go somewhere with him. And if they say, I can't do that because I have other things to do. It's like, if you just if you don't want to go with me. Just tell me, just be honest with me. And it's this really like subtle but insidious manipulation technique that I hate. Like this, like, Mm -hmm. like you make all these outrageous plans. Like he's like, just we'll skip school and we'll go to Los Angeles for the day. And if you say no, then it mean it doesn't mean that you just can't do it because you have school and other obligations. It means that you don't like me personally. It's this terrible thing. It's It's so bad awful um and it works because he convinces her to blow off school yep and blow off julie cooper and run off to la with him for the day and worst of all she goes what about therapy and he's like oh you don't need therapy and that's kind of full circle on oliver right because remember when this character first appeared in the story he was the one who that got, got to go. yeah. Marissa to turn around and walk back in the room and actually go to therapy. And we gave him the benefit of the doubt for that. But now we're full circle. And yeah. now he's telling her to blow off therapy because it's not about that anymore. It's just yeah. about him. Him. So as they are scurrying away to Oliver's car, Luke and Seth see them leaving, which makes Luke really upset because, you know, Luke, Team Ryan. Mm-hmm. And so, all of a sudden, Luke remembers he is friends at Pacific. And, He's on the, on the you wa- know... On the water polo team. Never did it occur to him to ask them before. But now that they're going to L.A. and Ryan is suspended from school, Luke's finally going to check in with his friends and see, you know, what's up with this Oliver and Natalie kid, you know. And so, he decides he's going to go check Oliver's references. Yeah. Check them, he does. Oh, oh, he, he, talks, he checks his water <laughs> polo buddies. That's his checking of references. Hey, uh, buddy. Luke loves that water polo. Yeah. Uh, Kirsten confronts her dad about Julie and how she's driving her crazy. And surprisingly, he's just as sick of Julie as she is. And then he makes Kirsten break up with Julie for him. He's like, yeah. oh, you can do it for me. Um, we'll, we'll get back to that in a minute. Kirsten is all of her dad's dirty work, so mm-hmm. why not do this too? Yeah. Seth has Summer and Anna over, and Summer is about to read her first comic book. Seth's really excited about He's this. very excited. Seth's really excited about sharing all of these things that he enjoys with Summer. He is very excited. And one thing that he's not sharing is his time. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. really just going to Summer. And leaving Anna out in the dust. And Sandy Cohen picks up on this immediately. He yeah. walks into that room and he knows exactly what's going on. Yeah. And I love how the, the show telegraphs this, right? Because we have the three characters. Uh, two of them are sitting on the floor, Seth and Summer. One of them is sitting on the couch. That's Anna by herself. And so the show has just through the setting of these characters in the scene perfectly depicted what's going on there. Um, and... Um, Seth, the, the comics, Seth, uh, let's see if you've heard of these comics before. Mm-hmm. Let's just see. Uh, the Dark Knight Returns. Have you heard of that comic? Uh, yeah, it's a movie, not a comic. Okay, but it's a, it was a comic. <laughs> was a comic. Yeah, they made a comic based on the movie. No, because the movie's called The Dark Knight Rises. No, it's original screenplay. No, it's, the, it's different. It's different. No, um, I think you're wrong. Then he also gives a Watchmen. Yeah. And then finally, Sandman. I heard they made a show. They made a movie also. But yes, they just made a show. It's very yeah. good. And then there's um, that Christmas song about the Sandman. Mr. Sandman. Sandman, bring me some toys. No. Wow. What? The Sandman is not a Christmas song. No, there's a there's a, a song. There might be a, a Christmas version of Sandman. Yeah, there is. Sung by Amy Grant. This is amazing. This is amazing. Amy Grant Christmas Sandman song. Okay. You, I believe you. You Google it. I believe you. I believe you. I don't need to Google it. I believe you. Okay. Um, what do you think of those comics choices? If you were, 
I mean, you haven't heard of them. I like Scott. Uh huh. I read comics, you know. You read comic. Scott, I read, I've read five volumes. The sixth is out. I told you to get it for me, and you said no. So. Wait, no, 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 no. I said, it's December. That would make a good Christmas gift, is what yeah, I said. So I now I know you're getting no. that for me for Christmas. I didn't say I was doing that. Scott. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't get it for me, I'm going to be upset. Uh, are you? Yes. Okay. So I read comics, guys. I read lots of comics. So I've, I've you, read five volumes of comics. If you were uh, trying to get mm -hmm. Summer mm -hmm. into comics, mm -hmm. would you start with The Dark Knight Returns, Watchmen, and Sandman, which arguably mm -hmm. are very good comics. I like Watchmen a lot. I've only read a couple volumes of Sandman. I like that a lot. Dark Knight Returns is you know, fine. I think I'd start with The Paper Girls. You, th you would start with Paper Girls. Start a with comic the that was girls. not out in 2004, you would start with that. Yeah, time travel. Then maybe some Walking it Dead. About, it is about time travel. You've, have you read a Walking Dead comic? No, I don't really think I want to. <laughs> and then mm, maybe some Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. What yeah. about uh, Spider Gwen? Mm, I don't know if she likes Spider Gwen. What about Miss Marvel? Miss Marvel she might like. This has been too much comic talk on this okay. show. Um, anyway, while the comic talk is going on, Sandy and Anna are going to have a heart to heart about relationships because she wants to know what makes Kirsten and Sandy's relationship so good. Yeah, what do they have? What do they have in common? Yeah, because and, and the answer there is nothing. They don't so have then it anything makes her really worried because she realizes how much her and Seth have in common. Yeah, I mean that's been that's been the kind of overarching thing this whole time right this idea from last yeah. episode from what summer said two episodes ago this idea that there's no spark because they are two people that are just exactly like each other and so there is no yin and no yeah and no ang no ang um it's callback humor yeah <laughs> thank you for explaining it you're welcome so that's not a good sign and then Seth Did asks, I have to explain your jokes Seth asks, it's not a good sign I didn't need to explain it everyone got it <laughs> Everybody got it. Uh, I love Seth you. asks if Summer can stay for dinner. Uh, not asking if Anna can stay for dinner at all. And Sandy Cohen. Well, she was already going to stay for dinner. Sure. S yeah, that's why she went. Oh. And then Sandy Cohen responds by just smacking his son like, on the head. <laughs> this is perfect. See, I had thought of it as Anna was already staying for dinner and he didn't even ask Anna if it was OK if Summer stayed. He just asked. She just asked Sandy or he just asked Sandy. And she got offended because she was supposed to stay for dinner. And sure. he didn't consider Anna's feelings. Why would you ask Anna? I don't know. Because if it was someone that you're supposed to hang out with and it's your girlfriend, I think it would matter if you invite another girl to stay for dinner. Nah. But. Nah. Yeah. So Luke shows up to let Ryan know that Marissa didn't attend school today. She went off with Oliver. And that he found out from his water polo references that there's no one at Pacific named Natalie. Now, but Scott, I told you, though. You told me Natalie was real, though. You know, Natalie is real. Yeah. You. <laughs> you. She is I real, mean, isn't she? Yeah. You pushed up against the line of lying. She's there. real. She, no, I, I didn't say that she was who he said she was. I just said Natalie is real. She's a character. She is a character. She's a character. Um, yep. So after hearing this, Ryan runs over to Marissa to warn her about Oliver again <laughs> and telling her about Natalie that he's she's not real again. And Marissa gets pissed off. And so she runs off to Oliver's. Yeah. Again. And Sandy sees. I love that moment of Sandy. So like Sandy has had this conversation with Ryan about like, don't leave this house unless you tell me uh, he like w leaving the pool house, walks up to the door, sees the entire Cohen family and Anna and Summer sitting down to eat, sees them all happy around the table. And then he walks off and decides mm -hmm. to go out on his own. And there's this moment where after he confronts them, he looks up and Sandy Cohen is above him uh, next to the pool house, looking down on what Ryan just did with this just look of disappointment on his mm -hmm. face. Just like incredible disappointment. Papa Cohen. And it's so heartbreaking. Yeah. And then we cut immediately. We go to, go to commercial and cut back to Sandy 
walking to Ryan again. It's the next morning. He, he's bringing Ryan breakfast and he tries to get him to talk again. Right. He's just like, come on, man. Sandy really likes to talk. Talk to me. Talk to me. And Ryan is just refusing to talk. He's refusing to talk. He's refusing to explain what's going on. He's refusing to reach out. He's refusing basically to trust Sandy. He's a man of very few words. He is. That Ryan. Yes. Yeah. So in Oliver's suite with Marissa, he's planning trips for them again. This time he wants to go to L.A. and playing the whole, well, if you don't want to go, just tell me. You just You know, you just have to be honest with me again. Yeah. Because Marissa's hesitant because she has other things that she needs to do this weekend besides hanging out with Oliver. Yeah, well, the L.A. trip suddenly turns into a Paris trip. And yeah. And, like, he's just going ridiculous. Um, and then any hesitation on her part about fl- flying to Paris in the middle of the school year is met with like, oh, if you just don't want to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So Kirsten's also hesitant to do Caleb's Dirty's work. Oh, nailed yeah. it. You're yeah. nailing it. Thanks. Thanks. And but she walks into her office and sees that it's been the decoration, the redecoration, the interior design has been completed. And it looks pretty, pretty good. good. Yeah. Turns out Julie Cooper is actually good at her job. Who yeah. would have seen yeah. that coming? So Kirsten decides to follow through with what her dad asked her to do and break up with Julie. Why, Scott? Why does she do I that? I don't know. Why does she do it? Well, I don't know. Why do your dad... Because she doesn't really like Julie Cooper? No, because she's daddy's girl. Like, that's that's who she is. Like, if her dad tells her to do something, she's going to jump. Yeah, not That's just what she's going to do. And it's not good. Julie quits. And I guess they're broken up forever. Unfortunate, because they were actually good together. They were. We talked yeah. about that. Yeah. But no, yeah. it's gone. So back in uh, Cohen's, what word do I want to say? Not Why just his just house. read what it is? No. I wrote this down for you, and you're choosing to go off script. Harem. Harem. Yeah. Harem. <laughs> we're going to go with a harem. P. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Seth and his ladies are watching Batman, the, the animated, animated series. series. Jinx. Yeah, I, I watch that. You did. I read we comics did and I watch Batman, the animated series. You're my summer, babe. We've talked about this. You know, okay. So Batman, the animated series, why would they not have flip-flopped something? And instead of having it B-T-A-S, they would have had it B-A-T-S. Batman animated television series because that sounds terrible but it's batman bats they don't (laughs) they don't name and then they could have abbreviated it to just bats and that would be so much cooler why did they not do that because batman animated television series sounds terrible the animated series yeah it's perfect whatever bts bats so as sandy walks in the two ladies have very different ways to greet Mr. Cohen. Okay, you be you be Anna. Oh, hello, Mr. Cohen. And I'll be Summer. Hello, Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I, I did a little too much. But she's just like... <laughs> hey, no. Hello, Sandy. Can we just let everyone know, too, hello. that you just put your shoulder into hello, it and you, like, dipped Sandy. it down a little bit because... You're trying to get, you know, like, oh, and if you had a hair, you're trying to flip it right now just to make it, like, even that much better. I bet you there is a fan. You want to have the fan blowing right in your face, and then it would just blow all of the hair back. Sunday. (laughs) So, Sandy calls Seth out for his flirting with Summer blatantly in front of Anna. No, he pulls pulls him aside. Yeah. He he pulls him aside. But Seth is doing that. Yeah. Yeah. and, And, like... Seth basically completely deflects this, right? He's like, because because Sandy says, "No, you're going to talk to me because somebody's going to talk to me around here." And Seth is like, uh, "Could it be that this is more about Ryan than it is about me?" And Sandy's like, "No, it's about you." And he's fucking right because yeah. it's about him because yeah. he's blatantly flirting with another girl yeah. in front of his girlfriend. Yeah, and back call Cohen. And then Seth is like, "Well, if it is a little bit about Ryan, he'll come to you when he's ready." And then he just leaves the conversation. And I'm like, wait, 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 no. Your dad had a really good point here. You know what? Stop being an asshole. Sandy, you say, Seth, we did not finish this conversation. You come right back here because this is not over. 
this is a conversation about you and you're not going to try and get out of it by saying it's about someone else. So you get your both feet back here and you look at me in the eyes. You tell him. Yeah. You tell him, Elise Cohen. I I coach. Yep. (laughs) Anyways. So Luke shows up at Marissa to get her things to bring over to Oliver's because he's freaking out and he was trying to get Marissa to leave, telling her about Natalie and course marissa doesn't believe him so she had already told luke just if you really want to help go to my house and pick up some clothes because all i need is some clothes right now so he goes and you know juju she had a really rough day and so she is pretty emotional and she's at the house whenever luke came over Uh uh-huh and and so they both they have to go to marissa's bedroom because that's where marissa's clothes are of course and then, you know, Luke just being the emotionally secure person that he is, he's just listening to Julie and trying to help. Uh-huh. And so then they stand up and they're just face to face. And, you know, they're uh-huh. just a few inches closer than you would think a mother and her daughter's ex-boyfriend should be. Uh-huh. And they look each other in the eyes. Uh-huh. And, you know, there's this this tiny little moment when you're like, are they gonna kiss? Oh, baby, it's not a tiny little moment. <laughs> it's it's big universe sized moment where they're and gonna Scott's kiss. And Scott's like, are they gonna? Are they gonna kiss? Are they gonna? What is it? Oh my gosh, they're gonna kiss. <laughs> oh my god, are you okay? <laughs> Jesus, this is how no. excited you got. <laughs> they have a moment, and it's the greatest thing the show has ever done. They do. They have a I moment. I am here for Luke and Julie. I know it's inappropriate. I know it's technically illegal, but I am here for it because it's a fake show and it's fine. I am into it. Let's do this. Yeah, you liked it. So Marissa's waiting on the bag that Luke is supposed to bring her, but Luke is a little late, held up with Juju. And so she goes down to the front desk to check if her bag's arrived yet. And she asks the concierge lady and she answers the phone and she says, hello, this is Natalie. <gasps> And at Natalie that point, Marissa finally has that moment that clicks. Mm-hmm. She's like, Natalie, oh, so Natalie you know Oliver Bishop? Trask? And Natalie says, yes. I babysit him. He's a little, little tight. So, yes, Scott, Natalie is real. She is. Kind of. Natalie Bishop kind is of. a real person, a real yeah. character in yeah, this world. She's just not the ex-girlfriend of Oliver Trask. Yeah, I mean... And was, I didn't say, I did not say that she was I an know, actual girlfriend. But you, Did it keep you going for a bit? You paying fast Did it keep you going for a bit, for Scott? Little, yeah, I mean, it would have been better had you said nothing at all. But yes, it kept me going for a little bit. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome, person that commented and was upset that I had spoiled it. <laughs> I didn't really spoil it. You didn't, but also you did. Ha. Uh, Marissa goes right back up to Oliver and confronts him about Natalie the true Natalie, and he goes nuts again. He does that thing where he hits himself on the head a bunch, um, and she she frantically tries to call Ryan to help out, but Oliver shows up, and he's got a gun! Yeah, because he's really smart to bring that out. Yeah, Yeah. that's what the show has escalated to. So Ryan still um, is on the phone line and runs to help. He goes into the kitchen, and he asks... Sandy. Well, he has the keys in his hand, mm-hmm. and then and Sandy says, "Give me the keys." And Ryan keys. does not want to give over the keys because the he keys. thinks that whenever he hands over the keys, that he's not going to be able to go. But at that moment, they lock eyes. Ryan respects Sandy, gives him the keys, and then Sandy says, "I'll drive." Oh, what a moment, babe. What a moment. Sandy trying to get that relationship foundation even stronger with that Ryan. three beat of yeah. trust, of yeah. conversation. I mean, it's not a big conversation, but there it's were a words. Start. It's a start, There babe. were words. It's a start. Yeah. So cutting back to Oliver and Marissa, Oliver is just going on and on about how he's in love with Marissa while he's holding this gun and shaking it around and she's starting to go hysterical, obviously, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then he starts talking about, like, <laughs> the gun isn't to hurt her, the gun is to hurt himself. Uh, this Because if you leave, I will have nothing else to live for. And this is scary. Yeah. This is scary stuff. This is real stuff. I, I knew a girl who dated a guy who did this to her. And it really, it really fucks you up. It, it terrifies you because... 
most like people, the guilt of, of that possibility like really messes them up. It's not, it's real and it's not a cool thing at yeah. all. This kind of, this kind of, if, if you leave me, I'll kill myself thing. It's awful. Yeah. It's awful. Um, I'll like I want to hate Oliver I want to pity Oliver I it's a lot of very conflicting emotions here yeah so Ryan he shows up and with Sandy they realize who Natalie is because they're trying to get into the hotel room and then it's the whole Natalie oh Natalie Bishop and then she walks them up to the penthouse tries to let them in but Oliver won't answer and she can't just go in without any reason and then as soon as they're trying to walk away, Marissa yells to Ryan, he's got a gun. Did I skip over too many things? Okay. Yeah. And then the security guys, they come in and even though they're in, it's not all, you know, wrapped up into a pretty little bow because Oliver, he still has the gun and he won't put it down. So then Ryan talks are you telling me Ryan approaches the situation and instead of using his fists, he opens his mouth and he talks to yeah. someone? Yeah, he does. And he uses this is I, I love this at, as the end of this kind of arc of the story, because from the beginning, we've painted this picture of Oliver and Ryan as these two people that are similar. Right. They are people that went through shit um, and have come out the other side. Yeah. yeah, outsiders that have kind of come out the other side and how they should be kindred spirits in this. But one thing or another has kept that from happening. And it is that similarity which Ryan uses to then talk him down. Yeah. So after <laughs> all of that happens and Oliver finally lets the gun down, Marissa immediately runs over to Ryan, apologizes, and... Is everything fine? The end, I guess. You know, is Ryan just going to easily forgive everything that Marissa did and how she didn't trust him anymore because they've been having issues with trust? Well, wait, 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 wait. Is Ryan going to forgive Marissa? Yeah. What about Marissa forgiving Ryan? Both. Are they both going to forgive each other? This is and this is what I don't like about this story is that suddenly, because Ryan was right in this, and, and he was, the inappropriate things he did trying to communicate that rightness to get washed away, breaking into her locker, taking the note, reading it, not trusting her. This stuff goes away. I don't know. It shouldn't. It shouldn't. No, but something that does go away is Anna. Seth and Anna. Jesus. What is that? Like, are you like eight for eight what? <laughs> on your transitions? <laughs> Do you really think they're good? Yes. Oh, <laughs> you're welcome. Yeah, so Seth and Anna are having this, you know, really serious moment about how Anna's upset that she is ignored by Seth, and he's giving all this attention to Summer, and as soon as they figure out that Marissa's okay, he doesn't want to, you know, like, talk to Ryan, be excited with Anna, have, like, a moment of decompression. He just wants to call Summer, and she's not okay with that. And I'm glad that she's not okay with that because she's finally standing up for herself and she says that she's not going to take it and she breaks up with him. Mm -hmm. So she leaves. And they're broken up. And they're broken up and he doesn't go after her. Right. I mean, there is... He's and, standing with the phone in his hand because he knows that he wants to call Summer still. And, and the scene breaks, but you got to assume he called Summer after she left. And that's, I mean, like, look, I, I don't think breaking up with someone as like a test to see if they're going to chase after you is a good thing. And I'm not saying that's what Anna was doing here, but I do think there's an opportunity for Seth to run after her yeah. and be like, look, you were so right. You were so right. I screwed up. I was excited. I am still processing my feelings mm -hmm. about summer. I have not fully processed that yet, but I do want to be with you and I'm going to commit myself to you. There's a chance that conversation could happen and, and that relationship could be saved. But he doesn't want to do that because no. he's he knows she's right. Mm -hmm. And he knows that he really wanted to be with Summer. But the only reason he was with Anna is because Anna showed up. She was there, which is a shitty way to pick someone. Yeah. Picking the person that just so happens to be there is a shitty reason yeah. to pick someone. Yeah. And so that appears, at least for now, to be the end of Seth and Anna. Long live Seth and Anna. Mm -hmm. Hopefully Anna doesn't just entirely drop out of the show after this point, um, I like, 
I like Anna as a character. I've, and I've said this many times. I like Anna as a character. I do not like Anna and Seth together. Um, and I hope she gets, like, room to breathe in the show as more than just romantic interest of Seth, you know? Mm-hmm. I hope. I hope. We'll see. But yeah. I hope. So Seth is upset about, well, not really upset about what happened, but he just wants to talk because that's what Seth likes to do. Mm-hmm. Just like Sandy, he likes to talk. And Ryan's back in the pool house. And Seth immediately apologizes for not having his buddies back, yeah. which I know irritates you because then that immediately forgives and justifies everything that Ryan does well, or no, did. Like, I, I think it's fine. I think it's fine to apologize and said, yeah, I should have believed you from the beginning. I should have had your back. You've always had my, my back. I think that's fine. But Ryan's response should not be, oh, don't worry about it. It's fine. Ryan's response should be, I'm sorry, too. I went a little bit crazy. You were right. The the way I was going around this stuff, the way it, it doesn't matter that I was correct. The way I was going about it was reckless and wrong. And you were just trying to help me out. You were just trying to keep me out of trouble. He doesn't do that. No. He's just like, oh, it's fine, buddy. And and like we go back to the status quo here and that's fine. I like when sh- like shows have to return to the status quo every once in a while. Right. Especially mm-hmm. when we do like this multi episode type arc stuff that the Oliver stuff has been at this part of the story. It kind of returns ourselves to the status quo. And yes, there'll be fallout from this, obviously. Mm-hmm. But um, I don't know. I, I, w- I would have just liked to see him. I feel like the last episode did such a good job at showing the ways in which Ryan was behaving irresponsibly. And I feel like the truth about Oliver comes out and it's just like all that stuff became fine. And I don't like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Do you not feel that way? Is that just me? Is me being annoying? I mean, he was acting a little intense, I feel like, for the situation. And... I, I mean, I can see it. I understand it both sides, both ways to where he, you would hope that he would apologize, but at the same time he, you know, didn't, but mm-hmm. sure. I don't know. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't make me upset about it like it does you, but you are very much, you like to have justification for everything and consequences and yeah, consequences, that's baby. what you really like. And life's not always fair. So no. But you like it to always be fair on the, well, but the TVs. I, I, it's not even that. Like, I understand life isn't fair, but it, it, I just want it. If the show's going to do something like that, I feel like it should comment on it in some way. And it just feels like it's not. And it feels like then the lesson of the show is not, Ryan didn't do anything wrong. And I don't know. If, I don't know. But I mean, like, I think that's real life. In, in real life, I don't think a teenager would apologize for that. Sure. Sure. But do you think... Like, do I, mean, I think a writer should do that just so that the writer can have the happy ending to what should happen? I'm not even saying no. I'm not saying that. I'm not, okay. I, like, there's ways of depicting something in your show where, regardless of, you don't have to make the character act a certain way to get a point across. You can still demonstrate through other characters in the show that the character behaved improperly. I think having Sandy Cohen come in and and once again reiterate that. Hey, you messed up. You still behaved improperly. You still got yourself in a lot of trouble. Like that's still not cool. Yeah. Would be a good thing. And maybe they'll do that next episode. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Well, that's it. I just feel like this ending was like a very much a just like, well, done with that. Moving on. And we are done with Oliver. <laughs> We're I done. I don't believe that. I don't believe that at all. I mean, the character, I don't like him. I know you don't like him. Anyways. All right, Scott. Well, that's the episode. So that's so 2000s. We don't really have a whole lot for that. So 2000s, because I don't really think it was like a, a heavily, this is 2000s. So there's death cab for a cutie, some songs. And then there's also the heavy, like layering of tops, but it was kind of that trend is also 90s, not just early 2000s. Well, but like, so that's so 2000s to you is literally just fashion. That's all you pay attention to. Yeah, I pay attention to that a lot. And th- I mean the music too, but. Well, Death Cab for Cutie, I wasn't even talking about the songs. It's just a reference to it. Like, the Anna referenced how shocked she was that she met someone that liked comic books and liked Death Cab and Sailing. 
Death Cab is a very mid two thousands. Like That's if you true. said that in twenty fifteen, <clears throat> people would be like, "What?" Yeah. Well, I'm gonna probably go with the fashion one, and I think you'll probably go with the music one. Yeah. But basically, that so two thousands is just Anna. Anna is very two thousand. Anna is like it's just super two thousand. Everything 2000s. about Anna is just very two thousand four. Yeah. yeah. Just all of it. Yeah. Just all of it. Yeah. Okay. Well, Scott, we have quite a few relationships that we need to update after this week. It was a whirlwind it was relationship. Quite, quite fest. the week, quite the change. So we're gonna start, Scott. <clears throat> Let's do relationship status. We're gonna start with Coop and Ryan. Last week, Coop and Ryan were two out of ten. After a rough couple of weeks, Coop and Ryan have seemingly finally got on, back on track. The truth about Oliver is revealed, and they've reconciled. But how much will the events of the past few weeks affect their relationship? We don't know. But right now, we're gonna give them a five out of ten. Scott, five out of ten. A pretty good middling score. We'll see where they go next week. Up All next right. week, Seth and Summer. Last week, we gave them a four out of ten. A bored Summer spends most of the episode hanging out with Seth and Anna, and the chemistry is undeniable. Mm, with Anna, very out, true. With Anna out of the picture, is it now time for Seth Mer? I think we're going to have to work on that a little bit more. But what do you give him as a rating for this week, Scott? Six out of ten. Six out of ten. That's better than Coop and Ryan. This week for Seth and Anna, last week they were at a five out of ten. As one relationship rises, the other must fall. And is broken up with Seth. Seth did not try to talk her out of it. I'm not ready to remove these two from the board just yet, but we need to drop them as low as we can. Seth and Anna are at a 1 out of 10 this week, Scott. Ooh, a 1 out of 10. Yeah, how are Sandy and Kirsten? Sandy and Kirsten Cohen, last week, a 10 out of 10. These two are on a roll, the likes of which this show has never seen before. This is what, Scott, three weeks? No spousal drama for three weeks running. You we, know what that means. We know this can't last, but damn it if we want to. So let's remain... 10 out of 10. Give them what we can for as long as we can. All right. Julie Cooper and Caleb Nickel last week were an 8 out of 10. Ouch. Looks like that trip to Paris did less good for the relationship than we were hoping. Like Anna and Seth, I'm not 100% ready to wipe this off the board just yet, but we got to move it lower. 2 out of 10. 2 out of 10 for Two the broken 10, up yeah. couple. Up next, we have um, Haley Nickel and Jimmy Cooper. Last week, we gave them a 2 out of 10 as well. And this week, I have to question, Elise, why you added... These people to the list at all. <laughs> Were you trying to signal something? Not only has Haley not been in an episode for three weeks, but Jimmy wasn't even in this one. So, uh, one out of ten? Now, according to you, Jimmy wasn't in this one. According to our summary, Jimmy was in this one. And it was wrong. Yes, okay. Last, we're going to end the week with Oliver and Natalie. Uh, see, Natalie, she was his babysitter. Yeah. <laughs> Zero out of ten. I wrote a dirty word in that one and at least didn't want to say it and it tripped her up. <laughs> Fuck you, Oliver. That's what I wrote. <laughs> All right. So those are our relationships. Now Scott wanted to add another one. I think I <laughs> is it time to add Julie Cooper and Luke? I don't know, Scott. What is his last name? Uh I can't think of it right now. Luke. Just Luke. Just Luke. Is it time? Is it time to add Julie Coops and Lukey Luke? Is that going to be your prediction for next week? I mean, sh shah. <laughs> okay. Shah. Anything else you think is going to happen? Episode 19 is called The Heartbreaker. Ah. And knowing that this episode came out on February 11th, I'm going to go ahead and guess that The Heartbreaker is going to be our Valentine's Day episode. Mm, um, that's a good and idea. I am guessing there's going to. Here's. So. Uh, Summer, mm -hmm. Sethmer, yeah, baby, that's happening. Marissa and, and Ryan, troubled waters. Luke and Julie. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's all I got. Okay, so that's all we have time for this week. But if you like this podcast, you can check out all of the other shows that we do over at doofmedia.com, such as the Doofcast, Do the Right Thing. We've got Ward. We've got Worm, if you want to listen for, to the backlog on that. Keep going, baby. Um, what else do you have? Deep Impact. Yeah. Um, Medium D. Yeah. Did I miss anything? Book Club. Book Club. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Book Club. Mm -hmm. So if you want to listen to any of those, just head on over to doofmedia.com or to any of the 
avenues that you listen to podcasts through iTunes, Overcast, just whatever pod, streaming. Just open your podcatcher yeah. and type the word doof and yeah. bloop, 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 bloop. And it'll come up. They're all Just there. like Luke. Yep. Also, consider, doni- <laughs> consider donating to our Patreon account. That's patreon.com slash doof media. What type of slash, Scott? Backslash. Uh, a slash. A slash, Backslash. Slash. You can donate a dollar a month or whatever else you can afford. And it will help us keep the lights on, keep the mics running, keep Elise in uh, fed. 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 <laughs> it is feeding. Your money is feeding Elise. Please, please, <laughs> your one dollar donation can feed Elise for an entire day. Please. <laughs> what please, am I eating? It can just cost feed, a dollar. Please help feed Elise. Yeah. Um, and if I mean, you, ha- of course, every okay. bit of that money does actually go right back into the to company. the podcast, not uh, to my food fund. Yes. Yeah, but if you also happen to be listening via Apple Podcasts, go over and drop us a re- rating and a review. That would be very helpful. It helps other people find us. Sure does. And it's just, you it's know, just an nice. ego booster for me. Sometimes so it's just nice it's to get some positive feedback that's yeah. just like, hey, you guys, you, the ones on the microphones, you're pretty good. Yeah. Hey, Scott. Five stars. You're pretty good. Hey, hey, Elise. You're welcome. You're pretty good. Thanks. Three stars. Out of three. I appreciate that. <laughs> How'd you know I was going to go there? Yeah, I just knew. That's what three years of marriage does. Three years. Yep. Oh, man, that ball and chain. I love you, babe. I love I you, I love you. And everyone else out there, farewell from the OC. <laughs> Bye. Oh, Scott.